Hey there, so you can probably already tell by the title of this video that it's a little different from my normal writing and educational tips videos. And this is something that's kind of hard to share. It's something that I've kept to myself for a long time now, probably like six months total. Uh, but my goal with this channel is to help everyone and to help you enjoy your horses, to help you be happier, to enjoy your life, to be more fulfilled. Um, and that really is important to me. And so as much as like what I share on social media and a big value of mine is to be positive and to encourage one another and to always see the good in everything. The truth of the matter is that sometimes things happen in your life or you're struggling with something that's really hard and that you like maybe don't want to share or you're upset about or you're embarrassed about. And so my hope with sharing this is that it encourages you if you're struggling with something, whether it's physical, whether it's emotional. Um, I hope that this story kind of gives you some hope, gives you some ideas. And also if you've overcome something in your own life, if you've struggled through something, if you've overcome an injury, um, comment down below and let us know because like I always say, this community is amazing and together we are stronger. So that is so important to me. So it all started like around Thanksgiving and I got this really bad cough. I think I got RSV and then my back like really was hurting me for a few weeks. And then the back pain kind of went away, but I still had like really bad sciatic pain down my leg and it just would not go away. I tried everything. Like I did physical therapy. I tried stretching. I tried not exercising and resting and just everything that I could possibly think of. Um, it was the worst. It is still there. So it's the worst when I'm sleeping, when I'm sitting, Sometimes it bothers me a little bit when I'm riding and, you know, just the emotional side of being in pain, um, not sleeping, not being able to kind of follow your normal routine. And then that makes you grumpy. That makes you not very fun to be around. And it also makes you feel, I think, very vulnerable, especially when I'm in an industry where I rely on my body to ride, to you know, basically make money and that is my job. And so because of that, it's something that I've really like not wanted to share publicly. It's something that I haven't wanted to talk about with anyone besides like my husband or my immediate family. I've kept it from basically my clients, my team, everyone, because I, so many people rely on me and, you know, if I can't ride, if I can't hold everything together and do the things that I need to do, it is like scary for a lot of people. So um, a couple of months ago, I finally got an MRI and you know how the medical system is. It's frustrating. Like you go to this doctor and you go to that doctor and they, you know, give you some muscle relaxants or they tell you go to physical therapy. And I literally tried everything. Like I did physical therapy. I tried going to Pilates and I just it was so painful. I just remember like leaving in tears and being so upset. I, you know, I've tried massage and everything. So finally I went and I got an MRI and it turns out I have like an eight millimeter disc herniation at the L5 S1 vertebrae on the right side, which makes a lot of sense because the sciatic pain goes down my right leg. Um, so in a way it was like validating to have a diagnosis and to know, you know, what's wrong with me. But at the same time, it was really scary because eight millimeters is big. Like that's a significant disc herniation. And as a rider, that's like the worst thing. I mean, you rely on your back. You need your back to be able to ride. And not only that, but for a while, like I couldn't sleep. I couldn't sit, um, and it's still not great. Like I'm not out of the woods, but I do feel in a place that I can share this a little bit because I think it's getting better. 
So I got the MRI done and then they suggested, they were like, well, why don't you just go get a consult with a surgeon um, just so you know what your options are. So I called the surgeon. They were like, hey, we're really busy. We have this long waiting list, but I'll send your MRI over to the doctor and we'll get back to you. So they called me back and they were like, um, we're moving your appointment up to like this week. We want to see you on Thursday. So I was like, wow, okay, that's, that's really bad. Um, so I went and I met with a neurosurgeon, which is, you know, it's scary like to think about that. And, and when I went to meet with a neurosurgeon, it was kind of when I was at my worst. Like I was in so much pain. I was taking so much ibuprofen all the time that I seriously think I was going to get a stomach ulcer. And so I went and I met with a neurosurgeon thinking, okay, like I'm gonna have surgery. That's just, I have no other options. I can't live like this, like it's terrible. Um, I need to have surgery. And so I went there and he talked through the procedure and it's not, I mean, it's an arthroscopic procedure. It's pretty minimal, but then he told me that they basically like, they have to drill through your bone. They have to go through your ligament. They shave off the part of the disc that's protruding. Um, and I'm sure that if I did the surgery, I would have some like instant relief from the neurological symptoms, like from the nerve pain that I have down my leg. Cause I don't know if you've ever experienced nerve pain, but it's like the worst kind of pain. And it's just, it doesn't matter what you do. You can't get rid of it. So after I met with a surgeon, I was just like, I don't want to have surgery. Like I'm going to do everything possible to avoid having surgery because so many people that I know that have had back surgery, it works and they feel a lot better, but they end up having another surgery and another surgery. And that area is compromised. I mean, it's already compromised, but once you go in and you do surgery, then it's even more compromised. So I'm really determined to take care of myself. And I think that a lot of times in life, we think that there's like this easy fix or one thing's gonna solve the problem or that you're just gonna wake up and suddenly it's gonna be fine or that you know surgery is just gonna be the magic cure and fix everything. And sometimes it is. I'm not saying that um, surgery is not, but for me, I really want that to be the last resort. Like I really don't wanna have surgery and I might have to, but basically what I'm trying to do is change my lifestyle a little bit and do everything that I possibly can to avoid it. So some of the lifestyle changes I've made, I've tried every way of sleeping. I used to sleep on my side. Um, for a while I had to sleep on my stomach because that was like the only way that it would kind of be comfortable for me. Um, now I'm sleeping more on my back, but sleeping has been a real challenge. And it's so hard because people tell you, you know, you need to rest, you need to take care of yourself. Well, when you can't sit, like I can't sit in the new sofa that my husband and I got. So I can't sit, I can't sleep. Pretty much the only thing that makes me feel better is walking. And luckily a lot of times riding makes it feel better. Um, so I've started in the morning instead of getting up and I, I usually get up at five and I would always come in here and sit at my computer. Now what I do, I got a treadmill, it's back there. So I got a treadmill that goes under my desk. I get up, I walk on that every morning. Um, I try to stay really hydrated. And the other thing that I've learned is to just listen to your body because your body tells you what it wants. And so like pushing myself and trying to go to Pilates or I went to this other manual therapy and it just hurt me so badly. And especially when you have nerve pain is like, you have to listen to your body and do what your body wants. Your body is gonna tell you the kind of stretches and the kind of movements that it wants. And for a long time, I couldn't really even exercise because Every time I would move, it would just hurt. And that's like terrible feeling. I mean, it makes you so depressed. And especially for me, because a lot of times exercising gives me that dopamine and it makes me feel good. And when you can't exercise, when you can't move your body, when you can't work out, it's really, really hard. So 
what I've done is I've found exercises. I found a way to move my body that doesn't hurt me. There are certain things that I can do, um, like walking. I can do, I can do lunges. I can do squats. I can't stretch my hamstrings. I can't like, there's a lot of things that I can't do, but I really believe, and I've tried, like even though I've been in so much pain for these last six months, I've tried to just move my body every single day. 20 minutes of something that didn't hurt, <laughs> which sometimes all it was was like walking and trying to stretch a little bit the parts of my body that weren't hurt. Um, but it's been really hard. And there's been days that it's just like, you know, I can't live like this, like I can't. Um, I can't go on like this. And it's scary because I love to ride and that's what makes me so happy. And when it started like hurting when I was riding, that's when I was just like, I, you know, I can't do this anymore. Um, so I just wanted to share this with you guys. If you're struggling, if you need help, we're always here for you. And I think that the beauty of horses and riding is that they are our passion and our love and they're what keeps us going um, because you're going to have things in your life. You're going to have, you know, tragedy or emotional pain or physical pain and you just have to keep going. You have to try things and believe in yourself and try to keep your optimism and like do things to take care of yourself, spend time with your horse, um, and just keep going because it's going to be okay. I really believe that it is going to be okay. So thank you for listening. Um, comment down below if you've struggled with something and what's helped you to overcome that. Um, hopefully I, this video has helped you. It, maybe you've struggled with something, maybe you've overcome um, pain or an accident and manage to get through it because I think that we always end up coming out stronger, learning more about ourselves and what we need to do to take care of ourselves. And I really believe that everything happens for a reason and having kind of this injury and struggling with it has made me make some changes and take better care of myself and reprioritize what's important to me. Um, so yeah, I will keep you guys posted and fingers crossed that we're on the uphill side of the back pain saga. Um, I'm going to try not to have the surgery and yeah, I hope it works, but it's definitely something that I'm going to have to take care of myself and it's something that's going to be there and I'm going to have to figure out how to manage it so that I can ride and I can sleep and I can sit on the couch with my husband. It's all those little things that you take for granted and then when you can't do them, um, it's hard. So thank you for listening and um, I hope this helped you.